What's good? Brian Tong here, and we're back with the Apple Buy for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. Yes, we missed last week's show. It's what I call a vacation. Now, the big story that caused the most confusion this week has to do with the next iPhone. Of course it does. A Wall Street Journal report says one model of Apple's next iPhone will have a curved display with Apple ordering enough flexible OLED screens for mass production. Now, those screens will allow for a curve at the edge of the phone, just like we've seen in Samsung phones. Now, we've heard all this before. But then, the journal also reports the next iPhone will feature a USB-C port for the power cord and other peripheral devices instead of the company's original lightning connector. Now, then the internet decided to run with it and started screaming, the iPhone is ditching the lightning port. The iPhone is ditching the lightning port. That's not how I interpreted it. The journal's statement is ambiguous at best and doesn't outright say the iPhone is getting rid of lightning. I think the new iPhone is going to have the option for a USB-C power adapter just like the iPad Pro. See, a lot of you might not know one even exists because not many of you have the iPad Pro. It's the only iOS device that can take advantage of the full 29 watts of power. It's a must have and I bought it because it charges two and a half times faster than that standard janky 12 watt one that comes with it. Oh yeah, thanks Apple for making me pay 35 bucks for the cable and 49 bucks for the power adapter to get the best charging possible. That's a bad Apple. <laughs> Now, do you really think Apple is going to all of a sudden just ditch its proprietary connection? The answer is no. And sure, there's a chance I could be wrong, but I don't see it happening. So let's just calm down now. Take a deep breath, okay? It's most likely for the power adapter and not the complete removal of the lightning port on the iPhone. Are we good now? Okay, yeah, we're good. All right, Apple had their annual shareholders meeting where a bunch of rich guys with Apple stocks can ask stupid questions at Tim Cook, like asking for a super smart dumb round phone seriously that's what happened to which tim cook responded uh not sure we're going to create a round phone but there were also some takeaways cook talked about the airpods and said apple is making them as fast as they can and called the wireless earbuds quite the cultural phenomenon uh okay tim you're drunk come on i don't even see one out of 100 people wearing them in the bay area you know what was a cultural phenomenon uh pokemon go or let's go way back, way back to this dance craze called the Macarena. Aye? Heck, even Salt Bay is bigger than the AirPods. Now, AirPods are good, really good. Apple's best product of 2016. But Tim, stop making stuff up. Now, Cook also pushed back that Apple is too consumer focused and said Apple will do more in the pro area and that the creative field is especially important to Apple. Hey, Tim, uh, just a reminder, we're at three years and two months since the last Mac Pro update, bruh. iMacs are at a year and a half, so uh, I'm pretty sure your priorities are actually somewhere else. Now, when asked about merging the iPad with the Mac, he reiterated that he sees them as separate and that the iPad will do more and more so that more people will view the iPad as a laptop replacement, but not a Mac replacement. Translation, don't expect the hybrid OS that the iPad needs and we want to ever come. All right, Google now has a live TV streaming service of their own called YouTube TV that will cost $35 a month and offer a bundle of channels from the big four, ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox, and channels related to those like ESPN, Bravo, and more. Now, pay TV only networks from Viacom, AMC, and Time Warner won't be a part of it. But come on, Apple, now there's PlayStation View, Sling TV, AT&T Direct Now, and YouTube TV, but Apple still has absolutely nothing to show for when they could have been ahead of this a long, long time ago. You know what? I'm tired of throwing out bad apples over and over for this. It just makes me sad now, like sad apple. <laughs> now, in case you missed it, Apple's new campus will be officially called Apple Park, and its 1,000-seat auditorium will be named after Steve Jobs. Apple Park's 175-acre campus will be ready in April for its 12,000 employees to start moving in. The campus's ring-shaped 2.8 million square foot building is entirely covered by the world's largest panels of curved glass. This is part of SJ's legacy and really one of the most impressive buildings you'll ever see. It's also the world's largest naturally ventilated building that requires no heating or air conditioning for nine months of the year. No word yet if the ventilation system is strong enough to handle really stinky farts. 
and the Nintendo Switch. It's coming out this weekend, but believe it or not, there is a connection to Apple. See, both the Nintendo Switch and the MacBook Pro feature a USB-C port, so Mike Murphy on Twitter decided to connect the two I found out that if you plug the Switch into the MacBook Pro, the Switch charges the laptop and not the other way around. So just a little power tip for all you out there. All right, that's going to do it for this week. You can email us at theapplebite at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you all next time for another bite of the apple.